Hey, how's it going, guys? Welcome to another video. Today, we're going to do a Dragonov video. You've probably heard it's been going around. Dragonov's broken, oh, Dragonov's OP, Dragonov's broken. And they're not wrong. Dragonov is broken. But I feel like a lot of people don't really know why he's so busted in Tekken 8. So today, I thought it'd be a good idea to just go over those things and show you everything he has in his arsenal that makes him a huge problem in terms of balancing in this game. Um, so, we just, I've got a list of things I want to show you guys, just to show you why, compared to Tekken 7 in particular, he's uh, he's had a glow up. He's had a big glow up, a uh, far bigger glow up than most of the other characters. Although some of the other characters are very, very strong in this game. Dragonov just exceeds the amount of buffs that everybody else got um, by a mile. Um, I'm going to show you these things, so I'll just get on with it. First off, I have on my list is his combo damage. His combo damage is outrageous in this game. And it's not just that the combo damage is so high. You don't really have to have very high execution to be able to do these combos. I'll just show you a combo now that I lapped for about two minutes to work out on this stage. This stage in particular has crazy combo damage for every character. But um, with Dragonov, it's, uh, yeah, you'll see what happens. So, as you can see, just from that combo alone, 145 damage. Basically dead, right? Um, so combo damage is crazy. Just for uh, just for like a basic combo. I mean, still. <laughs> 102 damage without using heat uh, it's kind of insane just for a simple combo like that um so yeah combo damage is through the roof with this character and paired with all of his oppressive frames it makes for a very deadly combination i mean he's blocking but you know <laughs> dragonov's frames in this game are kind of crazy um this also paired with the system changes which made while running moves easier means that anybody can do this. I mean, I just messed it up. That's not a very good uh, demonstration, is it? I mean, anybody can do this now. <laughs> Fucked it up again. I mean, while running two, his number one key attack made so much easier um partly why king is so strong in this game as well because uh his shining wizard uh while running two plus four is so much easier in this game means that you can do uh while running moves from point blank it's because right if you don't know why it's so much easier you see how he's running there like super quickly it wasn't like this in tekken 7 you weren't able to actually run while you're stood like right up close to your opponent. You weren't able to run like this. So the system changes make while running too like way easier, which obviously makes playing Dragonov way easier because in Tekken 7, the hardest thing about playing Dragonov, apart from the fact that he was pretty trash, was uh, that doing while running twos, you had to do instant while running twos. And if I could just do a blue spark, that was... So the blue spot you see here, that's a Tekken 7 instant while running. So those blue sparks, that's what that's what you have to do in Tekken 7 every time you wanted to do an, an instant while running attack. Um, so that makes him like very strong in this game. Heat Smash is, uh, well, it's just ridiculous the damage you get for it. I have Rage on. Let me take Rage off so you can actually see it and counter hit. But because of the uh, the distance it actually hits from, and the startup frames are 15 frames, and it does 50 damage, and it wall bounds, 
Uh, his heat smash is ridiculous. And let me show you something else as well about his heat smash. Which is, the, which is one of the biggest problems I actually had with Dragonov. I'm going to have to get the other... I'm going to have to get the opponent playing as Dragonov now. Just to show you this. If you think your opponent who's playing Dragonov is going to do a heat smash... He'll sidestep, right? Look how far away he goes. It's easy to step, right? It's very difficult to punish. So I managed to get him there, right? Because I had to run right up close to him. There we go. That's the perfect demonstration of why... It... By the time you actually get to him... He's already turned around and able to block again. A lot of the time. I am not... Mu I'm not messing it up because I've played against a lot of Dragonovs, as I'm sure you have. Like, if you don't know that you actually have to run up the whole time... See, also... That demonstrates another problem with this heat smash. <laughs> it tracked. See, I ran then. I ran up to him. It stops me running, right? If you run straight away... <laughs> you have to then run again. There we go. I got it then because I delayed it. <laughs> it's heat smash. Also, if you start running too soon, you see he tracks you. See, it stops me dead in my tracks there. It stops you in your tracks. If you if you try and chase after him uh, too soon, he'll like stop after the second hit uh, and you'll run into him. And then even if you're still holding forward, you'll stop running. <laughs> So you then have to start running again to then catch up to him. And sometimes by that time, he's turned around and able to block again. So just a couple of examples of why his heat smash is is actually OP. Um, is super overtuned in this game. Um, I don't think anyone would, will disagree with that. Uh, it's, it's so good in this game. So that's heat smash. Because he's got such heavy pressure paired with the chip damage in this game, while running two, there's a lot of chip damage, and so does the axe kick, right? Because this just does so much chip damage, the axe kick, and it's plus seven on block, and while running two does chip damage. Chip damage just adds to the kind of tornado of um, pressure that you're up against, and uh, with heat as well, with this doing so much chip damage, look how much chip damage that is, man. Um, it just makes him even more difficult to deal with. The next thing kind of paired together. So the Tekken 7 changes that he got. How do I explain this? In Tekken 7, the way you played against Dragonov is you stayed about this distance away, right? Because down two, if my down button will work. Down two whiffs, right? Oh, come on, controller. Down two whiffs from this distance. All those uh, power mids whiff from this distance. And even if he tries a while running two and it's a while running two, that'll whiff as well. Uh, he has long limbs, so you want to keep distance. Homing high. Um, they all whiff, right? So in Tekken 7, you stayed about this distance away. If you see a while running two coming, you see someone, you know, move towards you. Because 99% of Dragonov players will close the distance with while running two, right? So you get ready to step left. And most of his other stuff, apart from... Uh, I can do the move is tracking moves um apart from them you step everything else to the right for the most part and so when dragonov actually got close to you in tekken 7 and he's up here like pressuring you away and he has you at the wall back against the wall you just you, the plan is generally you don't duck him you never duck because he has such powerful mids and oppressive mids it means the ma it makes ducking uh, super risky. Because at the end of the day, you'd eat a down two. In Tekken 7, it was neutral on hit. It was zero on hit. So you'd be, you'd be back to square one if he did a... Uh, you'd be back to even playing field if, he's, if he does a down two in Tekken 7. It is nerfed in this game for good reason. I mean, um, 
But yeah, that was what you did in Tekken 7 because his lows were so bad, basically. All he had was down two. Everything else was super risky, like launch punishable, and um, you know, no, no one's gonna do this. So the plan was just stand your, just stand block, just stand block. He's gonna do a down two at some point. That's all you're gonna eat, and then you'll you'll sit reset back to neutral. Essentially, obviously, you'll still have your back against the wall, or even in the neutral, you know, down to create some space or whatever. Or you know, if he's gonna challenge with a wild standing move, you can do a wild standing four or whatever trade. So that was the plan in Tekken Seven. In Tekken Eight, however, you got two new lows which are really really powerful. Down back three plus four. Launch on block. It's minus fifteen, so you can launch it. Plus seven on hit. You see the opponent's dragon off going, Ugh! he staggers like crazy, right? Um, super oppressive low. Also, from this distance, it hits. So you can't, you know, <laughs> stay around this distance anymore. You have to be super far away. Um, also, if he's in up close, this is does a really good chunky bit of damage. 23 damage, and he's plus seven. Um, so this is like one of the biggest buffs he got in, in Tekken 8 with this new low. And he got this. Full crouch down forward 1-4. Really, really good. And on counter hit. Oh, let me go back to neutral. On a counter hit. You get all of this guaranteed, right? Um, I wonder actually, do you get um you get that as well. So firstly, that changes the uh, game plan against Dragonov. No longer can you stand this distance away. You have to stand even further away. Uh, and secondly, you cannot stand block anymore. You can't stand block. You have to guess, you know, if he's going to do this, you have to you have to block this and launch it. It's so oppressive. You just, it's like, it's like, uh, I'd say a lesser, but it's about the same as Brian's hatchet kick as well as down two to stop people stepping, right? Paired with this, okay, in Tekken 8, so you know how I said earlier about stepping Dragonov? Obviously, he always had, um, he always had down two, right, to stop you stepping in Tekken 7. Uh, everything else, you step to the right or just be aware of some tracking moves, right? Like QCF2 or QCF1, if I can do the move. Um, so they were always things to be aware of in Tekken 7. You know, th this was a very, very good whiff punisher as well. Um, but now in Tekken 8, the funny thing is about these lows, and I will show you one of these lows. So this down back three plus four, you step to the right, okay? Tracks really good, the left, right? Tracks really, really well to the left. Okay, so the funny thing is, this new low that he has, this other new low, he is tracking to the right. Whereas if I, if I step to the left, it does not track. So one of these lows tracks to the right, one of them tracks to the left. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but Eagle, he's in crouch. He can only do that from crouch. It's a full crouch move, right? You might be right, but I just think it adds more, like way more complexity to the, being able to counter Dragonov on top of everything else. So yeah, I just think it adds to the pile of things which makes Dragonov super, super strong. That really kind of brings me to the end of the video. I just wanted to showcase why Dragonov is so, uh, why everyone is saying that Dragonov is OP. It's not without merit. Like Dragonov is actually really, really overly strong in, in Tekken 8. Um, I'd be inclined to say broken. <laughs> like he, he's really easy to play. Uh, his damage output's insane. The system changes make while running too like really really easy. Heat smash is kind of OP. Chip damage is crazy. Uh, the Tekken Seven changes with the new lows and the tracking. And added with the tracking means that your whole game plan uh, is completely different. And the full crash down forward one four tracking to the right and his other low tracking to the left uh, just adds another layer of complexity even though one is from full crouch 
and one is from standing. I do notice that that is completely different. You know, no one's gonna, no one's gonna like crouch cancel into this. Um, I just think it adds another layer of complexity to the character that's already really, really difficult to counter in this game. Just wanted to do a little video on Dragonov and try to kind of show you guys like why Dragonov is so crazy in this game and why everyone's saying that he's like busted and nerfs are needed. Uh, I agree with those people. I think that Dragonov is just way too strong in this game. Um, there are some other characters that we can mention. Jin is really, really strong maybe too strong reyna is also really really strong i don't think that she's on the same level as dragonov uh she is very strong but yeah her there are ways to counter reyna she's just um tricky to go against because she's hyper aggressive the way you play her is pretty aggressive uh although dragonov is also really aggressive but i don't think she's on the same level as dragonov um there are some other characters which i'm leaving out i know that there are some other characters that are really 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 strong um, but I think that Dragon Dragonov kind of stands out because uh, all of these things added together just makes for like a concoction of like an easy to a kind of pick up a play character with super uh, oppressive frames and really good lows and really good tracking stuff. Um, so it just makes it really, really difficult. And if the player knows what they're doing, it becomes more like countering the character rather than the player a lot of the time with, with Dragonov. I feel like my, uh, myself. Uh, let me know in the comments if you disagree. Uh, happy to have a conversation there. But yeah, just wanted to show you guys some stuff about Dragonov. Take it easy, guys. Much love, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.